Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com, Dale Combs Asian Art, and today is Friday, December 15, 2017. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay auction results of Chinese and a few Japanese things this week we want to bring to your attention. And uh, we're going to also uh, let you know that we did a uh, video yesterday for the uh, Arts of Asia sale that Christie's held in Paris uh, on the 13th on Wednesday. Very interesting sale. They had some uh, great things. It was a small sale compared to the ones they run elsewhere, only 130 or 40 lots. But there were things like this, this very great big Kang Shi jar that went for a bargain price, and this extraordinary cloisonné table probably made in the latter part of the 17th century, uh, sort of, you know, in the Kang Shi period. Beautiful example, and uh, we talk about it a bit in the video about its, its mate and so forth. It's, a, it's believed to be the mate in another collection. Um, and on to the newsletter. Last week we included this in the newsletter. It's a really pretty Harado uh, porcelain uh, uh, teapot. And we, uh, we don't usually include buy it nows too often because usually the buy it now price is crazy. This is not crazy. It's $375 is what the fellow is asking for it. It's a nice example. It's got a couple of little petals missing off the tips of the uh, flower there. But that's not a, an unusual thing for these. They're so fragile. And he's asking 375 and it's a make and offer. So if you collect Harado, this is a, a pretty nice example. Uh, it's a very nice example, I might say. And uh, so give him a shot. Also, we had this up last week, another Japanese piece. This was erroneously listed as Chinese. It's not, obviously. Those of you who have been around collecting for all know what, exactly what this is. It's an 18th century Japanese pot with the scrolls. Uh, beautifully done, um, and uh, it, it went pretty reasonably. It went for $298. Not a bad price for that. If you, if you collect Japanese, um, they, they, those pieces don't turn up that often. And we had this up. This was, a, I like this. This is a very pretty Famijun uh, late 19th century planter uh, with a, a brown dressing uh, 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 dragon on the outside. Nice enamels, very brightly painted. These things are pretty festive looking. Um, and it's a pattern we've all seen many times. You see it, it was adopted onto plates. It was on, you see it on vases, you see it on uh, cups and uh, bowls and so forth. And here it is on a plant, planter. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought uh, uh, $578, but these are, these are fairly heavily collected and uh, in this pattern, especially for people that like Famille June. So um, it did just fine. It was a good price and not too high, not too low. I hope whoever bought it, put some plants in it or puts a flower in it. Uh, we've been having trouble getting the pages load here today, so you might see a few odd skips on the screen as we go along. And then we had this up. This was also something we spotted. It was a really pretty uh, Japanese Arita circa 1680 or 90 plate. I like the outer border on this a lot and then the contrasting inner uh, the center of the plate. Uh, the seller had it listed as Kaki Amon. Um, I don't think of these as Kaki Amon. It's Arita blue and white. But uh, it went for a very reasonable price, $341. Uh, I don't think that's an overpay at all. It was a nice example, real nice example. And uh, then there was this, this uh, two platters. They were probably part of a stacking set originally. Originally, The biggest one was around 40 centimeters in diameter, brightly painted, unfortunately not very well photographed. The colors don't show up right here. And uh, they went very reasonably, $496 uh, for the two. Uh, it wasn't many years ago, just the big platter would have brought seven or eight hundred. So um, things have changed. So it's, if you collect Chinese export, you're in good shape. And uh, then on to this, the, uh, the rank badge, very tightly woven. This was a nicely woven badge. The quality of the weaving was just beautiful on it, and it was in good condition. Uh, it looked to be in very good condition all over. A couple of very minor little pulls here and there, but nothing significant. And uh, we've seen these before. They they brought as much as seven hundred to nine hundred dollars. This one went reasonably. It went for five hundred and fifty. So uh, for whoever the uh, silk collector that got this, he got a very nice buy for himself. As I said, it's a late nineteenth century uh, example, but uh, beautifully done. If he'd put rank badge in the title, he might have gotten more bids. Uh, it was kind of a mistake on the seller's part. And then there was this Zhao bowl. It's a pretty good sized bowl. And I love the decoration of these pieces. And the Japan and the, and the Chinese collectors don't go after them, so you can get a you can get a bargain on these sometimes. There's a nice foot on it. You can see the turnings, nice and thick glaze running down the side. 
probably Yan, early Ming Dynasty, somewhere in there. And uh, it went really reasonably, $296 for that handsome big bowl. Um, I liked that a lot. Uh, it was a good looking thing. And uh, eventually they'll, they'll come up in China too. They'll start buying these and the prices will rise. And uh, there was this, Famille Rose footed uh, uh, bowl bowl. You've seen these. This is a particularly fine one, though. The decoration on it was really well done. The scene of uh, figures in various pursuits, playing Go, uh, out uh, with, with kids lecturing. Here you have a guy lecturing a kid about something. Um, very nice. Here's the bottom of it, with a chi mark. Uh, a nice uh, foot rim on that. Beautifully glazed underneath. The glaze ends nicely right at the edge, as it should. And uh, this, this did quite well. It brought $712. Uh, we've all seen the lesser quality ones. They turn up pretty often, fairly often, and, the, and they're, you know, they bring two or three hundred. But this was a particularly nice one, and uh, it did uh, really, really well. Uh, it came from a seller I've never seen before, a Ramkin, and they had a few things up. And then on to this. This was a, a really uh, nice uh, Daoquan Daotsai bowl, uh, Mark and period bowl, sort of as a variant mark on the bottom, but it's Daoquan. And, uh, there's a, there's a side shot of it. The decoration on it was really outstanding. And if you look there, the foot is uh, neatly done. Uh, just a nice quality piece all the way around. Here's the interior of it. Uh, well painted, uh, tightly painted, and uh, uh, the flowers are lovely in there. And uh, this piece did very well. It brought $8,322. But as you can see by the photograph there, this was a pretty big bowl. So I think it was like nine inches across or something. And this is a problem we've been having all day. Sorry about this. The, the, the pages are crashing out on us all over. <laughs> I don't know why. It was the latest Microsoft update, I think. Any rate, here we have this. Now, th I put this up because I was really shocked by this. This was a nice face, and I thought it would bring, you know, $1,100 to $1,300, maybe somewhere in that range. It's a good looking piece of Femi Ver, slab constructed, lion mask handles, nice looking landscape scene. But the seller, for some reason, maybe he's selling this for somebody and they forced it on him, put a big reserve on this. It got up to $1,530 in reserve not met. And uh, that was a mystery to me. I didn't understand how that happened. But anyway, don't kill your stuff by putting crazy reserves on it. The market will find the price. And there was this very pretty 18th century uh, footed, splayed footed uh, covered bowl with nice little handles on it. A really pretty little thing. And uh, it, did, it, did, it did okay, but it's a pretty good buy for someone, $163. A nice quality example, and it looked to be in great shape. Um, so, you know, like I said many times, if you see something you like, leave a bid. Um, you may get it for a bargain price. And uh, then there was this sleeve vase. He, the seller had it as Kangxi. Uh, I, I went back and forth. I'm not so sure it's Kangxi. It's certainly 18th century. It has a nice looking foot. Uh, well-rounded, the, the, the color of the enamel, uh, the, the cobalt rather looked rather rather good, uh, but it was drilled, and uh, I don't think it was 17th century. At any rate, it went for $700, $832, so on it goes. And our friends down in the Carolinas had this, this really pretty underglaze iron red dragon snuff bottle. This is a really nice quality bottle from what I can see of it. And a good wave pattern, not, not any, there aren't, isn't any copper burning through and green, creating green areas. The bottom of it, the biscuit on it looked nice and white and smooth. And uh, it did very well. Uh, it brought $920. But I don't think anybody overpaid for it. I think that was a perfectly good buy. I think it was a nice buy. In the same seller that had that snuff bottle also had this up. Very attractive um, uh, jade uh, belt hook uh, mirror. Um, the, they built these up, as you, you all know, out of you know different components. They put belt hooks on them often to make handles, um, and this was a nice one. The belt hook on it is what sold this. That's a nice looking uh, piece of jade there. I don't see any inclusions or problems with it. It's a good, good mutton fat, as they used to call it, color. And uh, then, of course, the, the mirror itself was uh, nice, probably made in the early 20th century and then assembled, and it brought $3,000. Which was a, was a good figure for that, uh, but it was a nice looking belt hook, and it was a good package. It was an attractive object, all right. And then our friend over in London had uh, these up, the pair of these uh, cloisonné vases with the applied uh, uh, dragons on them. Um, second half of the 19th century, from what I can see, they were good looking. 
and um, they brought $3,600. And now on to this good-looking six-section Meiji period in row. Uh, nice lacquer decoration on it. Little bits of wear here and there, but it had a pretty, pretty attractive landscape scene on it. Uh, little nicks and so forth, and it wasn't. It didn't have all the strings and the in the you know in the in the in the toggle or anything. It still did very well. It brought seven hundred and fifty-eight dollars. All right, um, which was a which was a pretty good price for that, I thought. Uh, I don't think anybody anybody stole it, but I don't think they gave you know they didn't give it away either. So anyway, uh, and then there was this nice piece. This is where Regent Horn had this. This was a very attractive compressed. Uh, crackle glazed uh, water pot and uh, here's the underside of it nice old piece um, this was a good early example and uh, it got some attention it did pretty well it brought eight hundred and thirty two dollars and ninety six cents so we'll call it eight hundred and thirty three but pretty color an unusual color and uh, I liked it a great deal and it looked like it had a good bit of age to it I'm not sure how old it's hard to tell but Ming anyway but good looking all right and then skipping over, if we can get the pages to load here. Come on, page. This has always been the problem all day. There we are. Um, and there are some other things that are coming up. Um, well, those are the things that sold, but there's some good things coming up this uh, later this weekend and next week that are still up here. We'll scroll down to them. We'll go through the week, get down to the bottom. There are the pages that are really slow to load today around here. I don't know why. And here are some of the pieces. You have this nice big Amari bowl right there nice piece of cloisonne there's a celadon vase and there's a few other things there's also some good metal work we found this bronze and it was interesting if you look at the christie's um uh, review we did the in that sale were a pair of phenomenal uh bronzes with uh, figures on the backs of one on the back of an elephant and the other on the back of a foo lion and this is this was clearly done in the style of that um i uh, the uh, those were kang shi i don't think these are that old i think these are uh 18th or early 19th century bronzes uh, from a, when I'm, a bronze from what I'm seeing. But nice quality and good color and uh, a rather interesting subject matter. Um, the guy could have used a little more light when he took his pictures. So we'll see how that does. It's, right now it's up to $205 and it's got eight days to go. Also up this week is this. This is a good cloisonne moon flask. Very attractive one. We'll take a look at the base of it. Here it is. Clearly a 19th century pot, uh, good, good enamel decoration on it, nice color. Um, they started making these in the 18th century mostly. It's got beautifully rendered um, uh, uh, dragon handles on the side, well cast. Those are nice looking handles and with good color. And it's up to $510 with four days to go. It's, it'll bring a few thousand, but a very attractive piece. And it's coming uh, out of a collection, I think in the Midwest. And what was this? This this is coming up over the over, over the next few days too. Nice looking Kangxi little uh, bottle vase with a with a, with a, you know flattened sides, the six sided vase, and it has those uh, uh, lotus tipped cartouches and whatnot. Nice looking piece. It's up to just thirty two dollars. So it closes I think on Monday. So you might want to check that out. And this very nice Femi Ver um, tea caddy with precious objects and and uh, auspicious symbols on it. And there's this, this sensor is coming up that closes uh, on Sunday. Good looking one. He says it's Kangxi, it's 18th century certainly. Nice looking uh, a decoration of the cobalt there. It's well potted. And this is from the seller Kangxi 0219 over in um, uh, Sweden. He gets good things, he has a good eye. And uh, there's this chocolate pot that's coming up. Um, the seller has it as a coffee pot. Of course, they didn't, they didn't have coffee. But this is a chocolate pot, 18th century, nice side handle on it, very classical, and with that, that interesting uh, curvy spout. And it's up to $1,000 already, and it's got two days to go. It closes on Sunday. But uh, it's a nice piece. Egmont Horn has that also. Very nice piece of export, sort of typical what you'll, you'll find in northern Europe and so forth. And there's this really pretty little mustard pot missing its cover but it's nicely potted well decorated and was under under lit obviously when they took the pictures but uh, it's a nice example here's a shot of the foot rim obviously a kang shi example and uh, we'll take a look at the side you see there's a little fritting on the end of the handle there but you can see that the body has some molded work on it and then colored in in the, in the little uh, leaf form cartouches that were created 
and it ends on Monday, and it's only up to $32. That's going to be in the uh, newsletter uh, as well. And uh, what else is there here? Oh, this. This is an amazing little document. It's a, it has to do with when slavery was being abolished in Cuba um, to keep the labor force uh, going there for the sugar plantations. Over the course of 25 years, this edict went through written by this guy. This is the document, one of the documents that authorized them to bring in indentured Chinese slaves, basically. About 125,000 of them over the years were brought to Cuba to work in the cane fields. They were all men, and they were all brought there to, to, to harvest the uh, sugar cane. So while they got rid of uh, slavery of Africans, they managed to get around it by um, basically turning some Chinese folks into slaves and bringing them there to, uh, to work in the cane fields. And it's a rather fascinating piece of history if you collect uh, things to do with uh, the East and West. And um, here we are. So that's about the end of it. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet to us uh, uh, here on YouTube, please do. Leave us a thumbs up. My tech guy keeps telling me that uh, thumbs ups are really important. you got to get those. They're good for your site. helps your visibility. And if you haven't subscribed yet to us over at bitamount.com for the newsletter, please do. It's free. And uh, thanks so much for visiting. And see you next time. Thank you very, very much. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. So long. Bye-bye.